I will now show you one of the most useful parts of this unit, Dube's optional stopping theorem. I want to start with a simple remark, which might be obvious by now, but maybe it's worth emphasizing. If uh, Mn is a martingale, then the expectation of Mn is the same as the expectation of M minus 1. And why is that? Because it's very simple. I just do a Tauler rule on the sigma algebra F n minus 1. That's just a Tauler rule. Okay. And by the Martingale property, I get M n minus 1 here. That's the Martingale property. So E of M n is the same as E of M, M minus 1 which in turn, of course, is the same as e of m n minus 2 and e of n minus 3 and so on and so on. And finally, e of m 0. So the expectation of Martingale is constant. Okay, if I have a super Martingale, if I have a super Martingale, then instead of equalities, I'm going to have a inequalities, right? So E of Mn plus 1 is going to be less than or equal than Mn. So here I have less than or equals and less than or equals, right? And uh, otherwise the whole thing holds. So E of Mn is going to be less than or equal E of Mn, uh, E of M0. That's the first point I wanted to make. The second point I wanted to make is that a stopped martingale is still a martingale. So if I have a stopping time, remark, if T is a stopping time and Mn is a martingale, then we know from before that m of t min n is a martingale. This we, we have seen in previous videos. And therefore, if I take the expectation of this thing, it's still the expectation of m naught. And if I have a super martingale, then the equality turns into an inequality again. So if I have a super martingale, then I have an inequality here. Okay. Now the big question I want to ask whether is whether this n is needed. And the answer is that sometimes yes and sometimes no. So can I just look at a stopping time and the martingale at that stopping time? And that's what Dube's optional stopping theorem is actually telling us whether this is still true if I forget about n. So theorem Dube's optional stopping theorem let okay so that's how it's called let uh, t be a stopping time and to start with I'm gonna say x let x be a super martingale. Okay, so I have a stopping time and a super martingale. And assume, assume that one of the three conditions is true. So either the stopping time is bounded. There is a non-random bound, like a hundred, so that the stopping time is never larger than that. That's a possibility. Okay? Either this, or, so these are still conditions, or, or, number two, the super martingale X is bounded, and t is 
finite with probability 1 or if you want almost surely so with probability 1 t is not equal to infinity however there might not be a bound on it for example if t is geometric a geometric random variable is almost surely finite but i can't say that it's always less than 100 so if that's the case and x is bounded or 3 uh, the expectation of the stopping time is finite and the increments of x are bounded so xn minus xn minus 1 is bounded by k for some non-random fixed k and every omega okay so these are the conditions i have a stopping time i have a super martingale and either one or two or three occurs then i can forget about the mean n so then i can have the expectation of x at the stopping time being bounded by the expectation of x at zero okay and it's again two theorems in one if x is a martingale if x is not a super martingale but just a martingale then i have equality here so it's two theorems in one if i have a super martingale and either one or two or three then i have this inequality if i have a martingale and either one or two or three then i have that equality okay that's the optional stopping theorem i'm going to prove this now the proof is not hard given all the prerequisites which we covered before <coughs> Essentially, it's a swapping of a limit and the expectation, and we've seen uh, theorems which actually do exactly that. Okay, so let's prove it. And the proof starts with two observations. The first observation is that we have the equality for the stopped uh, and mean n process. So we have expectation of m t min n equals or smaller or equal to e of m naught we have that let me let me talk about the original super martingale case this time so we know that e of x of t min n is less than or equal to e of x naught for every fixed n we know that from the previous uh, statement from the martingale property and the fact that this top martingale is still a martingale. And we also know that under each of these conditions, under each of these conditions, namely t being bounded or t is finite or the expectation of t is finite, under each of these conditions t is finite with probability 1. If it's bounded, then it's less than the bound. Here it's explicitly said it's finite. And if the expectation is finite, then of course t is finite with probability 1. If with a positive chance t could be equal to infinity, then of course the mean would blow up. So in each of these conditions, we also know that t is not infinite, almost surely. With probability 1, t is finite. If t is finite, then it follows, therefore, it follows that t min n as n goes to infinity converges to t if t is finite then eventually n will be larger than t and so the minimum of the two the smaller of the two is going to be t so for all large enough n the smaller of t and n is going to be t if t is infinite then this is not the case but if t is finite then then this works okay so we know that in the same with the same argument t min x of t min n must converge to x of t almost surely all of these are almost sure because again the same argument t is finite n eventually will be larger than t the smaller of t and n will be t so we know that x of t min n converges to x of t the question is whether e of x t min n converges to e of x of t and that's exactly the issue right we want 
we want, we want to take a limit of this inequality here and we want to pass the limit inside the expectation so that we can replace limit of t min m by x t. That's the strategy. So in case one, if t is bounded, if t is bounded, then what do we have? So in case one, if t is bounded, then look at x of t min n, okay? then this is going to be equal to e of x t for every n larger than the bound on t. t is bounded in case 1 means that there is an absolute bound, t never exceeds 100. Whenever n is larger than 100, then we know for sure that t min n is equal to t. And this thing is smaller than or equal to e of x naught by the original observation and we're done that's it for case one for case two for case two in case two we don't have this bound so we can't take n larger than some absolute bound because there is no such bound however x is bounded t is finite or more truly which we need and x is bounded if x is bounded, then we know that x at any index, namely, for example, t min n, is bounded. Some constant bounds this for every omega, almost surely or surely. Okay? In that case, we can actually pass the limit through the expectation. So we can say that if we take the expectation of x t, which is almost surely, xt is almost surely the limit of x t min n, just by this, right? Now I have a constant bound on xn, so I can actually swap limit and expectation using the bounded or dominated, if you want, convergence theorem convergence theorem. This is one of the theorems we covered with the uh, probability tools and I can say that this is the limit as n goes to infinity of expectation x t min n. However, for every fixed x t min n, I know that this expectation is bounded by star by e of x naught which actually doesn't even have n in it. So if I take a limit, that doesn't do anything. And I have my inequality. So that's for part two. And then part three is almost the same argument, except I want to concentrate on the increments of x, because that's what I have a condition on. Okay, so part three, if I have a finite mean of the stopping time and I have a bound on the increments, then here is what I can do. Here is what I can do. I can look at x uh, t min n minus x naught under the absolute value. So what is that? I can rewrite this as a telescopic sum. This is a trick we have seen with predictable processes before. Rewrite this as a telescopic sum. Okay. because the surviving terms are x of t min n for the this part and x of 1 minus 1, which is x naught for that part, if you expand the, the telescope. All right, now use a triangle inequality on this sum. The mod of this sum is always less than or equal than the sum of the mods, xk minus xk minus 1. The assumption was that each of these guys, each of these increments, is bounded by k. So each of these things is bounded by k. And therefore, I get something less than or equal to this many, t min n many, of k. And t min n is actually less than t, just by the definition of the minimum. The smaller of t and n, 
is always smaller than or equal to t times k. Okay? So what did I do? What did I do? I bounded this sequence of random variables. This is indexed by n. These are random variables indexed by n. They are bounded by t times k, which doesn't have any n in it. This is a random variable independent of n. There is no n index here. Moreover, this thing is of finite mean. This thing has a finite mean. Why is that? Well, k is non-random, it's a fixed number, and t, by assumption, in number 3, t has a finite mean. So the expectation of tk is k times e of t finite. Okay, and therefore I can again ap apply uh, dominated convergence. So dominated convergence again does the trick of swapping the expectation with the limit. So taking limit of x t min n minus x naught and the expectation can be swapped. So I can say it's the limit of the expectation of x t min n minus x naught. And from here the argument is exactly the same as before. Uh, we are talking about a super martingale, so this thing here is uh, negative, or at least non-positive. On the other hand, the limit of x min t is almost surely equal to e of... So inside the e, the limit of x uh, t min n is almost surely equal to x t. So I have that. And on the right hand side, each term here is uh, less than or equal to zero, and that's what I needed. That proves the the statement. Of course, the, the very last step here is that I can uh, just go under this two difference with the expectations. So this is e of x t minus e of x naught, which is non-positive, and that's the end of this story. Okay. So that's the proof of Loop's optional stopping theorem. And let me just uh, have a remark here. Let me just have a remark here. Let me just have a remark here. Suppose that we have a super martingale who is non-negative. Okay, so in Dube's optional stopping theorem, uh, in Dube's optional stopping theorem, we didn't have any condition like that. We just had a super martingale. Now I'm going to assume that it's non-negative, and t is almost surely finite. <coughs> and of course, it's a stopping time. Okay, almost surely finite and uh, stopping time. Uh, then already things work. Expectation of x t is less than or equal to expectation of x naught. So what is happening here compared to Dube's optional stopping theorem? Uh, t is almost surely finite. I did not need to assume that it's bounded. If it's a super martingale and non-negative, I didn't need the assumption of it being bounded, nor any assumption on the increment. Okay, and why is that so? So the proof works in a pretty similar way as before, except I'm not referring to dominated convergence. I'm referring to Fatou's lemma instead, and I can do that for non-negative random variables. So Fatou's lemma tells me that if I take the expectation of the limit of any sequence of non-negative random variables, x uh, t min n, that's going to be less than or equal to the limit of the expectation of the same thing. That's Fatou's lemma. Okay. Now, the expectation here 
is uh, less than or equal each of these guys because x is a super martingale is less than or equal than the expectation of x naught if I take a limit if that doesn't do any difference there so I have e of x naught on the right hand side on the left hand side I know that almost surely because t is finite this converges to x of uh, t almost surely this converges of x of, to x of t as before if I have a convergence sequence, then the limit is equal to the limit. So on the left hand side, I have expectation of xt. So xt is almost surely equal to this limit, but under the expectation, almost sure is already fine. So that's what I have on the left hand side. And there you go, we have the inequality. So for non negative, Super Martingales, we don't need assumptions or bounds on the Super Martingale.